fun. Hi, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. Everyone. Also, I would like to introduce to you our speakers for tonight. We have two dynamic speakers. Our first speaker is Ali, Ali Tobin. Ali Tobin is on the path of motivational strategies. He's on level three of understanding emotional intelligence. And this is his ninth speech. He joined Toastmasters in October, 2020. He wanted to improve himself as an individual, network with like-minded people who wanted to be successful and to use his gift of talking to change and improve life. The title of Ali's speech is Motivational Strategies, The Solution to Never Giving Up. Please right. help me welcome Ali. That's because of problems. So don't judge me if I take it off. <laughs> All right. Hello, everybody. Hello, everybody. I have to talk to people on Zoom, but I have to talk to people in real life. So I want you guys to look at me right now. See the mask on the cover of my eyes? How do I look right now, people? How do I look? I look like I can't see. I look like I'm lost. So the reason I'm giving this speech is I was having a conversation with one of my friends the other night, and she told me, she said, I feel like giving up. And I sat there and I asked her two questions. I said, what are you doing this for? And what is your why? And once we figured that out, she said she would never give up on life ever again. I realized that it's a lot of people walking around this earth like this, lost. How do I know people walking around lost? Because one day I was lost. At one point in my life, I didn't have a sense of direction. I didn't know where I was going. I felt like giving up. I didn't, know, I didn't know where I was going in life. But then I just had to figure out two things. What is my why and who am I doing this for? So I took out a piece of paper, I got a pen, I started down my why, okay? What is the reason why I get up every day? What is my mission? What is the reason why I'm living? And I, I brought it down to one thing. I wanna help people to believe that anything is possible through faith, hard work, and belief. That's my mission statement. I write it down every morning. That's my why. I have a reason for getting up in the morning. I have a reason for beating the sun up every day. It's, I have a reason for living. That is my why. So then once I discovered my why, I put that together with who am I doing this for? See, it's selfish for you to wake up and say, okay, I'm only doing this for me because I learned at some point, I'm not doing this for me. This is about other people. Right? The reason why I'm living is for other people. So I said, who am I doing this for? Okay, it's my grandma, my sister, my mom, my family, my friends. So if I give up on, if I give up on my life or I give up on my dreams, I'm giving up on them, essentially. I'm giving up on my family. So anytime that you ever feel like giving up, ask yourself, what is your why? And then who are you doing this for? And the most important thing about this is, who are you doing this for? You can't just be doing this for yourself. They say when you have kids, they say, I heard, I heard somebody tell me, they said, when you start to have kids, you, live, you start to live for other people. I don't have kids. I don't, I don't know that exact feeling, but I hear this from a lot of people who have kids. They say, when you have kids, you no longer live for yourself. I'm willing to live for other people and you're willing to die for that person. And you need to treat your life like that. Okay, let's get a raise of hands. Audience, y'all can raise your hands also. How many people have ever given up on a dream, ever given up on a goal that they had, and they just let the goal and the dream go away. Okay, Mr. David Jones, a couple of people had their hands up. A couple of people, this is a judge for you. Okay, a couple of people had their hands up. I think everybody has had that happen before. I'm gonna give you guys, I'm gonna give you guys a quick story about something recent I went through and I feel like giving up, but I didn't give up, cold calling. Do you guys know what cold calling is? 
It's, you know, cold call. has anybody ever done cold calling? Okay. It is the most uncomfortable thing to ever do. You're literally calling the random person and saying, hey, I don't know you, uh, but this is who I am. Essentially, I'm trying to offer you my business. You're trying to sell yourself to this person. And this person's like, how did you get my number? Why are you calling me? How do you know my first and last name? And that's, that's the, those are the reactions that you get. And as I was cold calling people, I was like, I was like 85. I was like 85 people through like a 300 person list. I was like, man, I feel like giving up. I was willing, I was like, this is ridiculous. Cause I'm not really a cold call type of person. And I, I had to watch what I told myself. I said, you know what? I said, what is my why? Okay, what is my why? So let me go back to my notebook. What if, why am I doing this? Just to help people show that anything is possible, faith, belief, and hard work. And then who am I doing this for? I'm doing this for my family, my friends, my grandma. So if I give up on this, I'm giving up on them. So essentially, I pointed all that back to, I will not give up no matter what. I refuse to quit. And the last thing I want to talk to you guys about is be willing to have something that you're willing to die for, right? As, have you guys ever heard the album 50 Cent, Get Rich, Die Trying? Has anybody ever heard 50 Cent, Get Rich, Die Trying? Okay, it's a great album. All right, it's not really talking about, it's not really saying money, money, money. It's just saying, what are you willing to, what are you willing to lose everything for? What are you willing to, to lose your life for? What are you willing to lose everything for? Because I realized the most successful people in life they're willing, to, they're willing to lose everything for their dreams and their goals because they understand that the why and who they're doing it for is more important than themselves. And so I, I ask myself every day, I say, okay, what, what, am I willing to lose it all? And I am. I am willing to do whatever it takes. I'm willing to lose it all right now because my why and who am I doing this for is more important than my own personal feelings. So I had to get over my personal feelings I had to discover that I'm doing this for other people. I'm, and I have, a, I have a reason why I'm doing this. And if you can figure those things out, none of you guys will ever give up on life. None of you. I just want to hear people say, repeat after me. I will never give up. I will never give up on my dreams. I will never give up. I will never give up on life. Never give up. Never give up. Take give up All right, great speech by Ali, very inspiring. It's good to stay grounded and know your why. Our next speaker is not a stranger to us. He is the current president of Queen City Toastmaster. He's a recent winner of a comedy contest of the club level, I believe, and competed in the area contest. And he is doing the Pathways Engaging Humor. The title of his speech is The Preacher's Sermon. His project is to provide a humorous preach which inspires the audience. David Jones, and the preacher's sermon. Madam Toastmaster, good evening fellow Toastmasters and guests. One week and a preacher was giving a sermon and it was one of those great sermons that really inspired everybody. The parishioners were sitting on the edge of their seats, listening, getting all excited, getting goosebumps and the preacher just kept going and inspiring them. And you know how it is, at the end of the, the service, Everybody left, you know, they're high stepping it. They're like so excited and they're like on fire, like I'm gonna rule the world. Because it was such an inspirational speech. Next week they go back and they're excited. They really like this preacher. They sit in the pews, he comes out and he starts giving the speech, and they're like, Is this the same speech from last week? Yeah, it is, yeah. Same speech from last week. Awkward. And the following week, and the week after that, same exact speech. After a while, the elders of the church got a little nervous. They wanted to know, is the guy okay? So they decided to go talk to him. And they went to the preacher and they said, sir, we're not sure how to discuss this with you, but your speech today was similar or exact 
uh, to last week and the week after that and the week after that. And the preacher smiles. He goes, oh, I'm glad you noticed. They're like, oh, you're doing it on purpose, sir? And he said, yes, I'm going to keep giving this sermon over and over again until you start practicing what I preach. I'm going to keep giving it until you hear the message. Now, in that same vein, you may have noticed that last week I gave a speech. Today, I'm obviously giving a speech. And I might give a speech next week because you're not hearing the message. You see, on Fridays, I like to look and see who's going to be speaking during the meetings. I like to see who signed up. And unfortunately, people haven't been signing up for meetings, whether it's for a role or for a speech. And therefore, I sign up to give a speech because I don't want us to go back to where we were last year where we had no speakers or maybe one speaker. And if I keep giving speeches, then hopefully that'll keep the momentum going. But as humans, we like variety. And if I'm giving a speech every single week, you're gonna be like, not this guy again. Therefore, if you sign up for a role, other people can sign up for speeches and get me off the speaking table. And I'm gonna give you two reasons why you should sign up to give speeches or to fill roles. Number one is, that's why you're here. You signed up to do this. You signed up to give speeches. You took money out of your pocket. You gave it to Toastmasters and said, help me become a better public speaker. And we took your money and counted it and said, okay, this is how you're going to be a better public speaker. Sign up for a role, sign up for speaking. Now, I know some of you are newer and you're like, I'm kind of uncomfortable. I want to get a feel for the club and see how things work out. And, I'm a little nervous now, but maybe in a few weeks, I'll be ready to give a speech or do a role. Yeah, no, you won't. In a few weeks, in a few months, you're gonna be just as nervous. You're going to probably be more nervous because now the pressure's on for you to give the speech. And you need to do it now because this is the time for you to, to start giving the speeches. You need to sign up for the roles and start speaking because that's what all this is about. And I'll give you a little tip. The easiest way to do public speaking for our, our guests and members is to do this, to speak, to get up here and give a speech. There's no shortcuts. You can't read a book or watch a video or listen to Ollie and I give speeches. You have to actually do it. That's, that's the only way to become a better public speaker. Number two reason to sign up for roles. The motto of Toastmaster is we build leaders or where leaders are made. I should know that by heart. And you might be saying to yourself, well, I don't wanna be a leader. I just wanna to learn to be public speaker. Really? Because you're not here doing that. But anyways, part of the leadership is something that I fell into. You know, Last year I was secretary, this year I'm president. I'm also the audit chairman for District 37. And if you're like me, you know, for 20 years I've been a field auditor. I've been a remote employee. The companies I work for are usually out of state. And I go around auditing different companies. And whenever there's a management ability that comes up or posting, I always apply for them. But HR gets my resume and they're like, you don't have any management experience. I'm like, yeah, no, I don't. That's why I want this job so I can get experience. And that's where Toastmasters comes in with all these different opportunities to become a leader or a manager. You start building you know, from the club level on up through the area, through the district, through the region, the state, the, to international. There's tons of opportunities to help you build your resume. And when you get the resume built up, then you apply for a job and HR goes, well, you don't have management skills here, but you've done this at Toastmaster and this at Toastmaster, and this division, and you've done all these great things. So maybe you can be a manager of a department. And I'm like, yeah, that's what I've been saying. Therefore, you want to get engaged in Toastmasters and in the leadership roles. But here's the other side of the coin. Some of the roles, especially as you go higher along the, the uh, ladder, requires certain levels of accomplishment, certain designations, like the DTM. You need to be a designated Toastmaster if you're at the executive levels. And in order to get to your DTM, that's what every Toastmaster should strive for. It's just a lot of this, a lot of public speaking here. You don't have to get a college degree. You don't have to go out and network. All you have to do is give speeches every single week and eventually you become a designated Toastmaster. And once you get there, then your resume is going to be filled and you're going to be able to go to companies. And the bigger companies know what a DTM is. And they're going to be like, oh, you're a DTM. 
you can help run speeches and different meetings and stuff. And you're right, like, right, I can. And the smaller companies, they'll be like, well, what's a DTM? And you'll be, it means I'm a good public speaker. And you'll start getting noticed and working your way up. Therefore, tonight, that's what I'm asking, is for every week to get excited about the opportunity to do a different role or to give a speech. And just even after this meeting, go on and sign up because that's why I like to look on Friday. I'm like, I get excited. Who's going to be speaking? Who's going to be doing different roles? Because as president, I really shouldn't be doing speeches, but I'm going to annoy you all and continue to do them until all the roles are filled. Thank you. And back to you, Madam Toastmaster. What an inspiring speech and perfect timing. Mr. Timer. Were there prepared speeches within qualifications? Yes, and uh, uh, I can give the, the reports. Yes. So Ali, Ali took uh, six minutes, 10 seconds. So his, uh, he quali his speech qualifies. Um, um, David took six minutes, 47 seconds. So his speech also qualifies. Both of them are in time. Awesome. I'll just give you a few moments to vote on the best speaker. Meanwhile, I want to tell you a little more about spring break. Spring break started in 1930s, just in the United States first for college students. But as I said, it's not just for college students anymore. Now you may not want to run off to the beach, but you still can take a short vacay and do some things that you that would help you be less distracted. When I grew up in the 70s and there's this song, let the sun shine, let the sun shine, let the sun shine in. And when the sun shine in, it illuminates all sorts of distractions. What kind of distractions? Dust, dust. Spring break, you can take a little vacay and, and do some spring cleaning. All the overhangs of your doorway, you get one of these devices and get around your door frame. You can get your crown molding and your baseboards. You open up the windows and see all the spots from the rain go ahead and do some window washing. That way, when you let the sun shine in, you won't be distracted by all the dust. Our next Toastmaster is a founder of Atrium Half Toastmasters. He helped start at the club in 2015. This is our second part of the speech, speeches where it is more impromptu. I'm going to introduce to you Arturo Cardenas, and I will ask him to explain his role. Please help me welcome Art for table topics. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. My name is Art Cardenas, and I'm the table topics for tonight. For those who don't know, Table Topics is impromptu speaking. And the purpose of Table Topics is to help members think on their feet and speak on any given subject between one and two minutes, and also to give speaking opportunities for people who are not in the regular agenda. Tonight, I have three questions, and if you can please volunteer to answer the question. As a reminder, if you can use the word of the day, and today is rejuvenate. And the first question is, I'm gonna share my screen, and hopefully this comes up, since we are online, and hopefully you get to see better. Okay, I cannot share the screen. All right, the first question is, 
where do you recommend going for a spring break and what things to do? Where do you recommend going for a spring break and what things to do? Do we have any volunteers? If not, then I may choose people who have not spoken yet. Vanessa is raising her hand. Oh, Vanessa, thank you. Thank you, Madam Toastmaster. Vanessa, would, could you please answer the question? Where do you recommend going for the spring break and things to do? Looks like Vanessa is frozen in time. Vanessa, if you can share your screen or if you can unmute yourself. Yeah, sorry. I think my internet cut out for a minute there. So I apologize. It's weird. It usually doesn't do that, but it did just at that moment. So sorry about that. So I'm sorry, your question was, what is your favorite your favorite place to go on spring break? Similar to that, yes. You can use that, yes. And you are breaking up. Oh, yes. Oh, okay. Maybe I should let someone else go. I, no, I uh, feel bad. Oh, no. Okay, yeah. just let me know if you can't hear me. Um, so, I haven't done the traditional college spring break experience that a lot of people seem to do when they're young. I have usually just stayed home or chilled out on my own. I'm kind of a homebody when it comes to vacation. But recently I have been reading about how all the beaches are really crowded right now due to COVID-19 and a lot of people wanting to celebrate their spring break outdoors rather than indoors. And I thought I would love to go back to a beach at some some point and have that beach spring break experience because it just sounds so relaxing and you cannot beat the fresh air. I feel like living in Charlotte in the city, you sometimes feel like you're just in a bunch of pollen or air pollution from cars driving by really quickly. And I feel like the fresh air from that ocean breeze would be so rejuvenating. So if I had to pick one, place I would probably choose the, I'll turn back to you hopefully you could hear me okay sorry about that yes I could hear you well Vanessa thank you so much that's a good really good advice now the next question is what is the best advice to rejuvenate mention two or more things what is the best advice to rejuvenate mention two or more things. Do we have any volunteer? Let me see if anybody's raising their hand. David Jones. David, <laughs> David would you like to answer the question? What is no, this? Actually, we have a guest here. Her name is Amber. Amber, you want to come up? And she is going to give it a shot. And you'll need to repeat the, the question because we they can't hear in the audience. But this is... All right, so the question is, uh, could you tell me your name, please? Could you tell me your name, please? Yes, my name is Amber Shipman. Amber, what is the best advice to rejuvenate? Mention two or more things. What is the best advice to rejuvenate? Mention two or more things. Can you say that one more time? What is the best advice to rejuvenate? To rejuvenate? To rejuvenate? The best advice to rejuvenate. Mm. Uh, I would say the best advice to rejuvenate would be um, Never give up. I would say um, never give up. And, and like one of, I think Ali said something about remembering your why. And I 
wake up every day and, and have to remember my why, which is my family and my friends and, and also my future and where I want to go. So, I mean, at times I do want to give up, but just um, remember not to give up. All right, Amber, thank you very much. And the next question is a fun question. And this is, if you could have a superpower, what would it be and how would you use it? If you could have a superpower, what would it be and how would you use it? Anybody would like to answer? This is about superpowers, any. This is Tammy. I can probably come up with a superpower. Excellent. Tammy, please go ahead. <laughs> um, so I'd like to have a lot of superpowers, but with a lot of things that have been going on in the world lately, um, there's a lot of things that superpowers could fi can fix. But if I had to pick one superpower, it would be to help with a lot of the um, poverty that's occurred due to COVID and a lot of the homeless. Um, I think we've seen a lot of tent cities going up around Charlotte. And when I think about that and think about, you know, during the winter, we were all in our warm houses. And, you know, I think about things like I have company over and I have like five blow up mattresses and pillows and blankets for all of those people for my company. And there's some people who don't even have that at night when it's cold. So if I had superpowers, I'd like to help all of those people. And I'm not sure what superpower that would be, but whatever one that is, is a superpower I would want. All right. Th Tammy, thank you so much for answering the question. And that concludes our section of table topics. And now I'd like to return control to Andrea, our Toastmaster of the night. Andrea, back to you. Thank you, Art. What a great, fun time of table topics. It's one of my favorite part of the meeting. Mr. Timer, did all speakers qualify? Yes. So uh, Vanessa took one minute, 47 seconds. Um, so she qualified. Amber took 49 seconds, um, but I guess for, for our guest, uh, we have a uh, allowance for, you know, uh, so they always qualify. So I think uh, Amber also qualifies. Uh, Tammy took 57 seconds. So I think Tammy also qualifies. Uh, so all three of them qualified for that. Awesome. We just have a few mi minutes to vote. And I just want to tell you that you can just go outside and enjoy the spring blossoms in your neighborhood, the daffodils, the tulips, the irises. You can also take a four day weekend and do some things around your own property. Get your patio ready for summer barbecue. your summer blooming bulbs now and pick up around your garden. Dust off your cushions for the patio and get it just ready for your own little backyard paradise. That is another fun thing you can do during spring break and you can go outside and rejuvenate and relax. Our next part of the meeting is doing the evaluations tonight is our general evaluator. Please help me welcome Julian, who's our evaluator tonight. 
Thank you, Andrea. So yeah, I will be your general evaluator this evening and that will be uh, introducing the evaluators for our speakers and then also asking for a timers report and then giving my overall evaluation as well. And then I'll also ask for the grammarian report after that. So to kick it off, uh, our first evaluator is Vanessa Waller and she's gonna be evaluating Ali Tobin. Thanks so much, Julian. Hopefully you all can hear me. I tried a different Wi-Fi, so this should work better. Ali, it's always such a pleasure to hear your speeches because you're so energized and you always have a positive spin in all of your speeches that I've heard you give. Even if you're talking about something that's perhaps a little bit more deep or thought provoking, you always have this very uplifting spirit that you bring to the stage. And of course, we know you as that uplifting, inspiring speaker. So that wasn't a surprise to me. But what I really liked about your speech this time that I wanted to point out was your structure. And this is something that I often struggle with as a speaker myself. I often kind of ramble a little bit too much. And I loved how you pointed out two very specific things. You hear why and know who you were doing it for. And then you elaborated on both of those two central points so that we not only knew what your main theme was, but we also had these specific examples. And I could tell you put thought into this. You gave us examples of what was your personal why. And then you talked about who you're doing it for, why you work hard, it's for your family, for your, your friends, you know, it, you had a specific personal story behind each one of those. And because I know you're really skilled at connecting with the audience, I could see it through your body language, through your, your eye contact. One thing I wanted to point out that you can think about working on for future speeches is even going a step further with your storytelling. And it's because I know you already are an excellent storyteller. So this is sort of both a weakness and a strength in a way. But one thing I noted, you talked a little bit about, you felt lost, you didn't know where you were going. And you gave us a little bit of an example of how you found inspiration by thinking about your family and helping them. And maybe you could tell us a little bit more of a story behind that. So we know kind of your whole story arc you know, what got you to feeling lost and how did you really, what was that really big turning point, that epiphany moment where you realized why you were motivated again and maybe working a little bit more of a story there. You talked a little bit about people who have kids, they have to really sacrifice for their kids. Maybe talk about a friend you know that has a young child and has had that experience. So we get a little bit more of a personal flavor there as well. So overall, you did an excellent job. I'm not at all you know, surprised that you gave another inspiring speech because you're an awesome speaker. So I'd love to hear your next speech and I really look forward to more of your interesting insights and, and stories that we can all relate to. So thanks again. And I will turn it back over to our general evaluator. Thank you, Vanessa, it was a great evaluation. Uh, so our second evaluator will be Mina, and she will be evaluating David Jones, our president. Thank you, Julian. I'm honored to evaluate David, uh, the speech of David today. The most impressive part of David's speech is uh, his body language that he brought the story to the life. Uh, so uh, we noticed that how he sits, stand up, uh, his hand movements, all of these things. It, I was looking at everyone that everyone was following very well. They were all in, uh, engaging in this story. And that was awesome. One of the things that I think we can add to this is a uh, vocal variety. For example, when you were uh, 
specifying to uh, one, two, three, it's uh, in order to follow this. Maybe you can uh, make your voice a little bit louder. Number one, number two, and that would be more helpful. And I recommend in order to ask some questions from audience in order, for example, to raise their hand if they had uh, never had uh, chosen to having a speech, uh, it makes them to more engage in the uh, stage. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking is uh, you were talking about the importance of the having a speech and all of these things. Maybe it's good to talk about what are the challenges and how did you deal with the challenges? Because I'm sure that you had several before, but now you are doing very well. So, and we can learn from each other that, oh, maybe this works for me too. So we can follow it. Otherwise, everything works very well and I hope to learn more uh, from you. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Mina. That was a really good evaluation as well. And David, you always give great speeches, so. All right, so at this time, I'm gonna go ahead and do my overall evaluation of the meeting. Uh, so I know I've done this role maybe like twice now, and it's always hard to kind of find any major issues with the meetings. They're, they're always very smooth and uh, people participate. And so it's been a really good experience with the couple months that I've been in the meeting. Uh, it's exciting to see some people back at the physical location and I will be excited to do that soon as well. I think it would definitely be uh, a different experience in person versus on Zoom. So, and I have not experienced that yet. Uh, it's also good to see a lot of the guests here tonight. Uh, we had, uh, looks like we have several and we, seems like we lost a couple of people, but anyway, we, we had them for a while. So, uh, Andrea really, or Andrea, sorry, great job as Toastmaster. You had really excellent energy and you really uh, shared your theme well with the group. And uh, so just really good job keeping that flow going and just introducing everyone and uh, good job with that. Uh, and then so all, all the roles performed really well. Uh, our timer, our grammarian, our, uh, everyone was well prepared. And um, so that's always good to see and it helps things run more smoothly. And also um, excellent speeches. And I just remember that I didn't do a timers report. So I'll do the timers report after this evaluation. Um, so yeah, good, really great speeches by Ali and David. You guys are both great speakers and you seem to improve every time I've seen you. So uh, great speeches. And then also I wanted to mention too, just um, David, great. Uh, like your topic was really good. And yeah, it is important for people to sign up for speeches because uh, you know it'll make everyone better. And it also just keeps the meetings more interesting. And I need to do that. And I haven't actually done a official speech yet, I've done several roles, but the speeches are a little more intimidating, but um, so that's something I will do in the future. So overall, it was really, uh, really smooth meeting and uh, everything look, looks like we're right on time to finish. Even with two speeches, we're, you know, hitting that 730 mark and, uh, you know, next meeting, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have maybe three speeches and then we'll also have more guests. So great meeting. And I'll go ahead and do a timers report now for the evaluators. Thanks, Julian. It was quite rejuvenating to listen to the speech evaluations. Uh, both of our uh, evaluators did good with time. Vanessa took three minutes, six seconds, so she qualifies. Uh, Mina took two minutes, 22 seconds, so she also qualifies. Back to you, Julian. Thank you, Avinash. So this time I'm gonna turn it over to our grammarian to give the grammarian report.
Okay, so um, this is the first time that I'm doing the grammarians report and I am rejuvenated to see that both um, speakers, Ali and David, do it, did an awesome job. I really didn't find very many um, well, so's, buts, or anything like that. So I would say as far as the grammar went, they did an awesome job tonight. Back to you, general evaluator. All right, so that kind of wraps up the evaluation portion. And I will now turn it back over to our Toastmaster and we can wrap up the, the meeting. Thank you, everyone. It's such a pleasure to be a part of a group of people who take the time out to invest in themselves, to help themselves grow. And taking a break during the springtime to get rid of all the extra distractions is part of helping your growth. Therefore, I hope that you all take to heart some of the suggestions that I made that you can get rid of some of your distractions and then you can buckle down and focus and really work hard and, and grow. I want to ask the ballot counter if he has any winners for us tonight. Hi, Andrea, it's actually, it'll be me tonight. Um, so yes, I do have, the results are in. So first of all, for our table topics, our favorite table topics was from Tammy. So congratulations to Tammy for an excellent job on her impromptu speech on the topic of spring break. And David, I don't know if you have a little ribbon to show, to hold up. We used to do little ribbons when we were in person, but now that we're on Zoom, we just have to clap. Excellent job. For evaluations, it ended up being myself. So I am evaluations. And finally, for our best speech, our favorite speech, we want to congratulate Ali Tobin. Um, so congratulations, Ali, and thank you for doing an in-person speech to help us test out our system of a hybrid meeting. I think that's a great first frontier to have uh, to have crossed there. So thank you. And excellent job to everyone who participated. Definitely the meetings would not be the same without everyone participating and making it fun and dynamic. So thank you. And I guess, Andrea, I can turn it back to you for any final remarks. And I will just return the meeting over to our, the president, David Jones. Thank you, everybody. And tonight was a great night. Our first hybrid meeting. We had three. We're down to two. One had to go, but I think it worked out okay. I, Ollie and I were talking. We need to get like a little Bluetooth because the people in the audience can't hear what I'm hearing. But, you know, that's we're learning as we're going. So, mm -hmm. um, but we had a great meeting. And thank you, for Vanessa, for uh, doing the polls. And Ollie wants to wave again. Oh, <laughs> he said, thank you. Okay. Um, and let me think. I just wanted to say to our guests, let me start with you, Drew. Any uh, thoughts or feedback for tonight's meeting? You're muted. The phrase of the year. You're unmuted, yeah. <laughs> Are you Can you hear me now? Yeah. Okay. Now we can. That's weird. Better? Better. Okay. Uh, sorry about that. I wasn't sure what to expect having not done a Toastmasters or ever like public speaking course or anything like that. Um, I appreciated the structure and the different roles and how there wasn't a lot of uh, one person controlling the meeting. There was the ability for, I don't even, it seemed like half the people on the call had a role. So I certainly uh, appreciated that and, and 
different ways to get involved and, and be in different situations to, to uh, learn how to speak better and better yourself. Perfect. Yeah, that's uh, the good thing about Toastmasters and what I was talking about was other than the presidential speeches, um, every person that spoke will be a different person next week. It's always a different, you sign up for different roles and do different things. And Joseph, also your first time, any thoughts or feedback from you? No, I enjoyed the structure of the meeting. It provides a good framework to practice various aspects of speaking. So I think it'll be interesting to, to participate in. Perfect. And I just want to say hi to Avisat. She's one of our members, but she hasn't been able to make it much. So Avisat, I just want to say, recognize you and say hello. Maybe she's having dinner. Oh, there she is. Hello. Uh, yeah, thank you for the admission. Actually, most of the time I do have like background voices around with YouTube. That's, that's why I usually go um, on me and just listen up to the session. Well, perfect. Glad that you uh, were able to join us tonight. And Jay, I forget. Uh, Jay, are you uh, a guest or part of Atrium? Any feedback from you for tonight's meeting? No? Okay. And we will move on. I think that's it. We are at 632. We always try to make the meeting right on time and uh, we're a minute late, therefore going to sign off. But again, everybody is welcome to be here next week in person or again on Zoom. We're going to just keep working to perfect it so that people that don't feel comfortable coming out next uh, yet, it's still going to be a good meeting. So I appreciate everybody's participation and, and being a part of it. All right. I want to say good night. Thank you. Hopefully everybody will sign up for rules. Thank you. All right.